thereafter to some brief uh, opening remarks uh, and also in a way you start to place some of the matters on the record, including updates, certain matters. Uh, thereafter, we'll uh, then get to the items uh, as per the notice convening this meeting. Honorable members, we are reminded of the rules of the National Assembly as uh, they apply on virtual uh, platforms. Uh, the first is to remind ourselves that at all times our mics remain muted our video cameras off until at the time when you are recognized by the chairperson uh, to speak. At that point, you will then unmute your mic, switch on your video camera. But in a situation where we experience connectivity challenges, we would ask the permission of the chairperson to proceed without a video camera on so as to maximize your bandwidth and that the meeting is able to hear you and follow uh, the discussions. In a situation where any of the participants on the platform is uh, disconnected and had to reconnect, please ensure at all times that as you reconnect to the meeting, your video camera is uh, switched off as well as your microphone is also muted. This is to uh, avoid the uh, background sounds that could be picked up by microphones as microphones are quite sensitive and this may distract the speaker that is on the platform at the time. Wise point of orders are allowed in the meeting in terms of the rules. Please be reminded that on raising a point of order, you would not unmute your mic unless you are recognized by the chairperson, in which case you'll then be allowed to raise the point of order on which the chairperson can roll upon uh, in line with uh, the rules. We are also advised honorable members that we do not raise a necessary point of orders to a point of collapsing the meeting on this platform. Like I said, it's merely to remind ourselves so as to ensure that our meetings proceed uh, without uh, challenges. That is uh, on the side of the rules and how we need to conduct ourselves uh, going forward. I would now, uh, for purposes of us proceeding uh, with the meeting, especially the time when we may need to make a decision just to know if we have the quorum, as well as uh, whether there are apologies uh, received. Honorable Kolabana, is it an issue that you can hear me? No, I don't have an issue. I wondered before we moved on to the agenda, um, if you could just give us an update on the situation with the security clearances for the board, SABC board. Honorable Kolabana, in my opening I indicated we are dealing with the formalities first. Okay. Then in the, then in the opening remarks, I indicated that we also use that to update uh, where we are before we get to the agenda. So that's how I was checking if probably there may be a point that I'm not audible uh, because I was going to those that may have submitted apologies for purposes of record. Can we then invite uh, support if there are any apologies received? Uh, morning, Chairperson. Morning, Chairperson. There's no apologies from members. Thank you, Chair. No, no apology received. Um, and, and, and we have been given a sense that we do have now a quorum as we proceed. That's correct, Chair. Yes. Um, I'll just check if Ms. Mdabeni is here. Morning, Chairperson. Yes, Chair, I'm here. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, I'm, I'm just checking in case there may be uh, something else that happened this morning, 
which I may have uh, slept without knowing. Otherwise, uh, if there's no change on the updates, you can just indicate, uh, Mr. Davin. Um, um, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I, I was writing you a message now. Um, we've just received um, some feedback from SSA um, for 10 um, more um, results on the security checks. Uh, so as it stands now, we are at 17. So there's still more outstanding. Thank you, Chair. No, thank you, Mr. Dabin. Uh, you, you'd understand, uh, honorable members, uh, that that communication is done with administration as opposed to it done with the chair. Um, so by the time I went to sleep, there was no update from the last update we have given. Uh, but you now have uh, the update that we are at, uh, at, at 17. But I just thought that in doing that update, honorable members, uh, as the matter is also of public interest, that in the open and remarks, I would use this to further clarify. And I've chose this time to start with this uh, because in the previous portfolio committee meeting, we dealt with this as last, uh, that I deal with it whilst uh, all of us are still uh, uh, ready uh, and not in a rush to get to another meeting. Uh, which includes members of the public and those that represent civil society continue to receive inquiries. Uh, the same uh, to uh, members of the media who also take interest in ensuring that uh, uh, the public is informed on where the issues with regard to their national public broadcaster uh, stands. Honorable members, you'd remember that I had briefed you that in line with your decision as the committee, that we would not want to get to a situation where we proceed, we, appoint, we, we make recommendations for appointment, and later on find that the people would not pass the vetting. So this committee took consciously a decision that it would want to allow the vetting process so as not to have history repeating itself, where we have had appointments before in the board and there would have been questions on some of the candidates, which does in a way play on the stability uh, of such an entity. But it is also based on lessons learned even in the other public service where people would be appointed and the candidate would have to be later withdrawn on the basis that something may uh, come up which would affect directly uh, the position that they hold. So in that regard, we reported at that time, as Ms. Darwin would have said, would have received uh, seven, and now we are receiving another 10. And I want to say, uh, honorable uh, members, uh, this is also as a result of the committee uh, acting on the matter. We've deliberated, we have asked everyone else to use every avenue to ensure that we can push those on the other side uh, to support the committee to speed up the process. At a formal level, as the chairperson of the committee in line with the rules, which puts on the chairperson uh, that the chair can act in the best interest of the committee like we did during the recess, that we advertised because there was no committee meeting that could sit, but it was in the best interest of the committee and parliament that we started the process uh, of advertising at that time. We put up a program that we were able to do everything else that is within the power of the committee, except for this part which needed uh, external uh, help outside of the committee control. Now, in this regard, we have formally written to the House Chairperson, give a, gave a detailed report of where we started and where we are, and the need to help us in interacting with the leader of government business, as well as information to the minister as a shareholder in the SABC 
as well as uh, to the president as the appointing authority as this committee only makes recommendations of candidates, but not uh, being a, an appointing authority. We've also in ensuring that we do not do things outside of what the law provides, interacted with the legal department and the legal advice received was quite clear that as the law stands at this point, there is no provision in law once the board has expired that you appoint an interim board and therefore the legal advice would have been the steps we have taken understanding that we are talking to 12 non-executive members of the board of which there are three executive members of the board who are in the main the executives from the sabc and the day-to-day -day operations of the sabc continue as we know, the board is not responsible for the, for such, but more of the strategic uh, leadership. And therefore, in the intervening period, the day-to-day -day operations of the SABC would have not come uh, to a halt. And we thought it's important to explain this part because in the inquiries received, the impression that has been created was that the committee would have led to the collapse of the SABC in the delay uh, in recommending and the actual appointment. Uh, and, and I thought it's important from a point of separation uh, in terms of what the board does and what uh, those that deal with the day-to-day -day operations of the SAPC do. And this has been also the legal position received from parliament and we have communicated as such. We have confirmation from the house chairperson that the matter was receiving attention as early as last week and, and that those discussions continue uh, on his side to try and get us to be assisted. And I want to make uh, once again this commitment on behalf of the committee that necessarily on the 27th of September, we had already started with our deliberations uh, with regard to candidates. The only thing that we could not do was to recommend names. But it was important for the committee to acknowledge on that day the comments from the public so that at the time of making recommendations of the names, those comments would have also been taken into account. And this has also been the legal position that has been presented to this committee. So that it's important that we have that understanding and that the committee is still committed, even if we were to receive all the candidates uh, by the end of the day today, we will be able to uh, work around our times, irrespective of our programs from different political parties uh, to get that meeting uh, to make the necessary recommendations and ultimately get to the house. I'm saying this, because I do not have a doubt in my mind as the chairperson of the committee that my assessment so far is that all the members of this committee as members of parliament do put the people first and they understand that the SABC is the entity of the people of South Africa. And the sooner we resolve on this matter, the better and surely would be flexible uh, at all times to get this out of our way from the parliament side and leave it to the appointing uh, authority in that regard. <clears throat> so I thought it's important that as I open, I deal with this aspect also in the interest of uh, informing the public uh, with all uh, media inquiries that would have uh, come through and we have been responding to. Of course, I do take note uh, that as political parties would have different views on matters. But for those that serve in the committee, as well as other South Africans who have been following the deliberations, they do know that there is no political intention to stall the process, but it has been a prudent decision by the committee that they would want to have people who have been vetted. And this is part of responding to some of the problems that have been raised about entities of government, including the SABC on state capture. So, so that's very important. 
maybe the other point to raise, uh, honorable members, surely you would have received a letter with regard to the SAPC uh, from, again, uh, the civil society uh, lobby group, SOS, which has informed the committee formally that they have approached the NPA on the matters raised on the state capture report with regards to the SABC, and I think that's called demanding action. And I'm saying this again uh, in the interest of informing the public that we do acknowledge everything that comes uh, before us as the committee as it relates to uh, public interest. Uh, so please uh, do go through it. Uh, they've stated the reasons and of course quoting the area that uh, they are focusing on, which they think the NPA uh, needs to work on. <clears throat> it does not mean that the committee has taken any position on that matter, but it is a matter of us being informed as the action is the initiative of SOS as uh, 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 an, uh, an organization that takes interest in the sector, in particular the broadcasting side of things. So, so I thought it's important as I open that I deal with this, not at the time uh, that would be closing the meeting. So I, I take it that uh, that helps to to clarify that it's not really political process on other matters, but it's just that we are adhering to a decision uh, of the committee. So that's the update. Um, if there is uh, uh, anything you want clarified on that, uh, that's the time. Otherwise, we would then be moving to the agenda of which I will also explain how we think, I think we should deal with that aspect. My hand is out. Thank, thank you very much. I wonder if you could clarify two things for me. Um, first of all, in, in the full knowledge that the vetting system, um, certainly in the SAP, both areas, it's common knowledge that the vetting system is is way behind thousands of cases where, where they still have to do vetting. So there's, there's an inevitable delay. Why did this committee not start the process in much earlier, perhaps February, uh, putting the ads out to, to be hustled through as we were to, yes, we got the job done um, as we, as a committee, but inevitably the, the, the obtaining of the clearance was going to be an issue. So I'm not understanding why that wasn't factored in and why this wasn't, uh, the pro whole process wasn't started far earlier. Um, so that's question one. And question two would be about the legislation. Initially, I thought that it would be more or less automatic that an interim board would be appointed. But on my rereading of the legislation, it seems to me that it's only if the board is dissolved by this committee that an interim board may then, uh, one may put forward um, possible members of an interim board to the president. This, this uh, The board was not dissolved. It, it worked out its full term. It was not found to have done anything egregious that would um, ensure its dissolution. So there was nothing in the legislation that actually said we could go ahead and now um, appoint an interim board or have an interim board appointed by the president. So, uh, I mean, this, this clearance could take another three weeks or so, and we have the executive now working entirely alone with no oversight. Um, it, it's, it's an untenable position. So what's the plan? Chair. Are you done, Honorable Kolobani? I, I, I am. I just asked. Okay. Let me then, uh, I'm sure other members would then uh, want to respond as you are saying, you're asking the committee, and I will understand from a, a person who, who comes in as a new member to a committee, uh, you would then ask the, that question to the committee. Um, but if you've been uh, present, surely I would not expect that to happen. 
but be it as it may be. I'm sure you do understand, Honorable Kola Barnett, uh, that we do not just take the initiative. There are processes that get followed. We have received the referral not at that time, but on the 30th of June, as 80 seat by Parliament. At that time, on the 30th of June, it was the time for the recess period. That's when we received the referral. So we acted even before, we acted on referrals that were sent to the committee on the request of ministers, understanding that a particular time we needed to, uh, to act on that. So we've acted based on that. And from where we are, we took the necessary steps even during the time of recess to do that. I think the second point is really that we have been faced with that before with ICASA. There was also a point of being skeptical of creating instability in the transition, uh, that you do things that begin to say to people what decisions you can make, what decisions you can't make. So I wouldn't say that would have been the reason for the referral to come uh, at that time of the 30th of June to the committee. So we acted once we received the, the referral. But as I say, other members of the committee uh, may want to speak to that. But this other point that you are raising about the interim board, in fact, you are repeating exactly the point I was making, that the, the legal position is that there's no dissolution, but this is the end of term of the board. And the law is silent on that. And therefore you will not be able to move in that score. Hence our letter clearly indicates that we need assistance in pushing the vetting process to be complete so as to make the actual recommendation, not the board, not the interim board, which is not provided for. But when you talk to interim measures in the interim or intervening period, that's a situation we have is exactly what you described, that you have the other uh, executives uh, running without, uh, of course, the board being there, which is why it's important that those that need to assist the process understand uh, what we are uh, dealing with. I must say, Honorable Kola Barnett, if you remember when we were briefed on the timelines that were presented to the committee, this was based on experience of the committee in dealing with the SSA in the other appointments we've been doing, that you will give it uh, that period. At that point, there was no preemption or any plan to say probably SSA may not be able to meet the timelines as they usually do, uh, because we must also commend them that they were able to do it at different times and were able to make uh, uh, our recommendations at the time we need to, to make recommendations from a vetting point of view, right? So, so that's that's a situation we have. So from a point of a plan is that uh, we think the intervention that we sought is beginning to give us uh, the results that are needed in pushing the numbers. Otherwise, as me and you would know, and the other members, we have not been getting a report uh, that says there's any progress being made uh, over and above those people that may have also signed the consent letters uh, uh, quite late uh, as compared to what was expected uh, of them. And, and I think, uh, like I said, we've even encouraged members here who may have uh, influence in the other committees, which includes yourself, uh, that raise the matter because, it, I, and I still maintain, uh, the committee decision not to appoint or recommend subject to would have been a correct 
decision to do. Uh, so that at the time we make recommendations, we don't come back to regret uh, when one of the candidates has to be removed already, probably appointed subject to. And it's part of the renewal we need in the state that we get credible people in these institutions, right? Not just from a point of qualifications we've seen, but when we say fit for purpose, uh, it also means that all other things are important. Uh, if I were to use the words of the legal people, was that that morality question still remains important as we rebuild uh, these entities, even if we do not think we should consider what the public raises about certain, certain candidates. So I'm just saying, for me, that will be the, uh, the response in that regard. Uh, that surely uh, those who need to make decisions are following what we are uh, uh, talking about here. And, and we must appreciate that we are halfway there. Uh, it means that we just need to put more uh, emphasis that it's not within our control, but we are really pleading that we get to be assisted because there's no plan, like we have said, no plan for an interim board. Because there's no such a provision. So the only plan we have is to get this recommendation process going through and it ultimately gets to the house. Uh, of course, if we were to get this done this week, it would have been good to just get the meeting going and, and still uh, lobby the programming committee uh, from all fronts uh, to get us on the agenda and, and that the board is able to uh, to get in uh, in that score. So we can only hope from the fear you have of no oversight, uh, that even those that are appointed in, in positions of the executives, that they also act in the interest of the people. And that in that period, we do not have to have any investigation uh, that there would have been a problem. And I think we should trust them enough that they are acting in the best interest of the people, even uh, in this uh, gap measure that, that is there. Um, so that, that would surely be the response I see. On I, other I do have a follow-up, sorry, Chair, uh, from yeah. what you had just said, if I may. Yes, Honorable Bojani, I've, I've noted you. Yes, proceed. Oh, shall I? Um, uh, Chair, when, when you said you waited you were only told by the minister in June. Why would you wait for, for a minister to tell you what you know? I mean, the five-year period is a finite period. You knew exactly what day that board um, would, be, would be no longer, would close down. So, so is there something in some legislation I'm not aware of that somehow this committee's got to wait to be told by the minister that something's going to happen, which they know is going to happen because they appointed the board five years ago. I, I'm not understanding. We, we do oversight over the department, over the ministers, over everything to do with this portfolio. Why are we waiting um, on, on someone else to tell us to do a portion of the job that we already know has to be done? I think that that is perhaps I should have phrased my initial question. Thank you. Let me then take Honorable uh, Bolan so that when I respond, I respond at once. Chairperson, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep my video off. I have low shading, if you don't mind. You are permitted, uh, Honorable Bolan. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I think with everything that Honorable Dan Kolapanat has raised, we the question is then, does the programming committee understand the agency of the matter? And with everything said and done, can we get a commitment from you to say when uh, the state agency finally provides the clearance for the candidates, then we do not wait for our scheduled meetings. Perhaps we then call an agent meeting so that we do not have a situation where we, 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 there, 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 there is a vacuum in the leadership, especially considering that legislation does not make room for an interim board, which in fact would not even be desirable. Thank you, Chair. 
uh, Honorable uh, Dr. Basso. <coughs> Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members. I, I think firstly, um, we need to thank you for the briefing about this process because the reality here, we are being hammered left and right um, <clears throat> by the media in particular um, because they don't have this information. <clears throat> now, now that this has been clarified, I so wish that we should find a way uh, that everybody is on board in terms of understanding. That's one. <clears throat> Number two, uh, as you know, that I'm also fairly new in the committee. But my understanding from the very beginning when we started this process, it was explained that uh, we are working under pressure as the committee. We are working on injury time, but uh, we must try our level best to ensure that um, we proceed with the with 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 the, with, with the process smoothly, and as such, um, we ensure that uh, we do comply in terms of legislation and other pieces. I mean, uh, processes that are there. That's my understanding. Hence, at some point, it was agreed that uh, even the issue of the team. Uh, should be done parallel with our process so that there are no further delays. Hence, ultimately, I will appeal to the members that at this point in time, all of us as a member of, of members of committee at this point in time, knowing very well the challenges in front of us, let's own up the process. So it won't be fair to find ourselves at this point in time where it's us and them within the same committee because for me, that will raise issues as if we have not properly handled this as, as the community. The, the impression that is there already with the public as well as with the media. I am saying it therefore, Chair. Let's try our level best as the committee. We have started this process and we're good in terms of interviews and everything else. Let's not lose that momentum because the problem is not with us. Although I'm not sure where, the, but I'm saying the problem is not with us. Then hours from now, Chair, in my view, we need to find a way. How do we manage this process going forward? All of us here as members of committee, that would be my plea, Chairperson, in this. Even if somebody arrives yesterday, but all of us now are members of committee, let's try and find a way to ensure that this process is very smooth. We must not have us and them at this point in time. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Dr. Basso. I'm checking if I have left anyone else because I think at this point I'm going to respond and rule that we are able to move forward. Okay. Machozi. The Honorable Machozi. Thank you, Chairperson. Can I keep my video off? Um... Hey. I, can, I can hear you're multitasking there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you no, know, but chair, on a serious note, um, I think uh, what Honorable Pasop is saying is very important. And, and uh, we must note that we are all members of this committee and it you are sharing the committee. You've got other responsibilities, yes, regarding the committee, but in matters of the entities, we all take these decisions and we cannot be players and referees at the same time. So um, we must then take this process as it is so that it becomes a fair process for everyone. We cannot say that now we're at 17 candidates and we want to now speed up the process and other members have not been vetted as yet. So as much as the media is, is out there cunning, but um, we'll keep on responding to, to what we know, to what the process is happening. I mean, that thing was public, uh, the public was participating also in, so they saw that the process was fair. It's only the vetting, not part of our side as the committee, because if we were doing the vetting, then I would say that then we need to speed up the process, but it's not us who is entitled to do so. 
Okay, so we can't play a referee and a player at the same time. So let us just wait for the process to unfold. And after that, then we will proceed as such. Thanks, Chair. Can I come in the last part? Uh, Honorable Dr. Basso, yes, the follow-up. <clears throat> Just a very last point here. Uh, uh, as a proposal, not, uh, rather than to be seen as we are suppressing other members, we rather, for me, we come up with proposals. That's where we are as the committee. I think Honorable Portani has started that. That's where we are now. How do we get out of this? Now, I'm, I'm proposing it here. Let's come up with proposals to assist the process as a committee. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Honorable uh, Dr. Basso and other members who have made the, their contributions. As I said, we would uh, in a way move from this point after I briefly respond. Honorable members would remember that there are people who are made to assist the committee. This includes the content advisors who take us through the processes uh, all the time because we do not do the administration side of it, as well as the committee support that then execute at the end. In the absence of the ATC, even when you have appointed a member, as it has happened with some of the members who have joined this committee, they had to observe and not be regarded as committee members until it's officialized uh, in parliament. We've, we've been made to understand this in all the other processes that we've gone through. That, that referral uh, from the speaker uh, gets to be important and it's official and we therefore act on behalf of parliament on those basis. And like I said, which is very important because this, this has been the angle that we have been responding to even over the weekend, um, that we didn't do anything. We are responsible for, for the failure as the committee. And to the contrary, I want to maintain when an official referral by the speaker uh, to the committee, we have responded adequately, including invoking the rules of the National Assembly where the chair could act without the committee in the best interest of the committee. And for that reason, we have acted accordingly, but we needed to act on something official. It may be a matter we may want to discuss uh, later on as we would be looking at other processes, whether it is indeed correct to go 12 months, uh, like others are suggesting in the public uh, that we should have done it 12 months before, um, and what it does to the stability of the institutions and the decisions that get taken in the interim period when people do understand that they may not be making the cut uh, in that regard. And I'm saying we had this discussion when we were looking at the CASA, when we wanted to do uh, even other vacancies long before they would uh, expire and this would have been the advice we got uh, at the time uh, that you are likely to create problems and instability and that there's officially no declaration of vacancy which has been uh, declared and referred to the committee. As I said, we may hold different views on that, but we acted on what is officially uh, referred to the committee. We developed a program that within the control of the committee were able to deliver on well on time, except for what is external dependencies uh, that we're dealing with. And as I said, even in that, it should not be taken as the committee 
attacking the state uh, security agency for failing on this and that. The times given, including what Honorable uh, Dr. Basok would have raised that we're dealing with these matters uh, parallel because we wanted to meet the deadlines was informed by experience of delivery on such a promise when it was made before when we made other uh, recommendations for appointments as the committee. And therefore, there would have not been preparation that at that time, you'll probably have system failure here or there, because those are things that would happen outside of the committee control. I think what gets to be important, honorable members, is the interventions that are being made to a point that today we have moved from zero, we are at 17. And, and those that are making those interventions, I think we should appreciate that they have also listened to the committee on the need to get things done uh, speedily um, from the side of the committee so that we can deliver to, uh, to parliament. And, and therefore, Honorable uh, Botlan uh, clearly would still push for the programming. And that is why I committed yourselves uh, without checking with yourselves. And I, I'm happy that you're confirming that, that we should be able to be flexible as people who act in the interest of the people. And the SABC belongs to the people of South Africa. We have to ensure the stability there. So we'd have to meet at any given time. And surely, um, the House Chair, the programming, uh, they would have the same uh, reasonability in accommodating the committee because the interest is the same. It is that of the people of the country. Um, so, so it's important to just make that point. And as I make this point, uh, it should be clear that at this point, even the parliament or the programming committee would not be uh, to blame uh, as if they may probably have refused us an opportunity to present on an agency basis. It is because there is no report before them. And the reason there's no report is because the committee has not been able to finalize owing to external dependencies. And, and as I uh, leave this point, is to really come back to the point raised by Honorable Dr. Basso, as well as Honorable Majos, that even at the time when there is pressure or an attack on your decision, what you need to satisfy yourself with is whether that decision was taken properly, which in this case, yes, because it was a committee decision that we would not want to proceed with recommending people without them being vetted. And, and whether that decision indeed uh, makes sense in terms of what we want to address. And therefore its correctness is not the one under question but it is what will enable that decision to be affected that we're struggling with, which is got external dependencies. So the correctness of the decision, we should not doubt it because there are questions out there to a point of becoming representatives of that question, instead of explaining the rationality of the decision that the committee would have taken in assisting uh, that the government is able to, uh, <clears throat> to, to, to ensure that we put people there uh, fit for purpose and, and so on, right? So I'm just saying the correctness of this is, is also to learn from history. Uh, in particular with SABC, uh, those who have been following, they know that history. Uh, and in fact, at that time, when there was that problem, they questioned whether there was no vetting process done before you could uh, appoint people. So we should be a learning uh, uh, committee 
because we do have legacy reports that we wiped on and there are things that we may not want to repeat, not with our eyes open, uh, honorable members. Uh, I, I really appreciate uh, your contributions in this regard. And indeed, we'll do our best uh, to continue to uh, interact uh, with those that must assist uh, the process. Uh, and I can confirm, Honorable Bolani, even after this meeting, we'll still be lobbying that uh, there must be flexibility on the side of the committee to get, uh, firstly, a meeting even outside of our slot, like it has been the case in other situations, to finalize the matter once there is this as a report, uh, but we can't apply it on just uh, half of uh, the candidates. It will just not be fair to do so. And, and therefore, uh, also lobby that uh, we are prioritized on the agenda. And, and as I said, I take people who sit in the programming committee, even though they may come uh, from different political uh, parties and presiding officers, but what is common is the interest of the public that they represent as members of parliament. And surely they will be reasonable in this regard as they've been uh, before uh, when we're dealing with other appointments. Uh, I want to rule that uh, honorable members will now proceed from this point uh, <clears throat> and that we get to the part of, uh, uh, of the agenda uh, in that regard. Now, as we get to the agenda, uh, this is the point I want to also make at, at this point so that when we get to the actual presentation, uh, one would have clarified it in the beginning. Uh, I'm sure honorable members would make, will also have appreciation that we met on Tuesday last week. They themselves would have raised a point about the number of entities we need to deal with and that we will also need to come back to some of uh, the entities. Uh, I must say that uh, a draft uh, amendment to the program has been submitted uh, very late in the evening. That's why it would have not been shared. And I went back to it uh, to ask for changes, changes as it relates to the SAPO appearance, uh, that it would have been better to have it uh, as a program coming in after the, uh, the medium term budget policy statement that the Minister of Finance would, would give. So that at the time we meet, we have a better sense of what we are dealing with as there's been a, always a referral to what could come or not uh, to come out of that process. So with those uh, proposed changes, you would then have it circulated uh, uh, probably whilst we are in the meeting. I would expect that members would make uh, comments uh, because we would want to have those back not, and, and not very long, but still in this uh, program for the term as we are uh, last week. I hope we we'll bring them, uh, group them uh, according but those that uh, are in the separately and, and pay attend its uh, challenges. Uh, the idea was really to just shift it just after uh, the minister would have addressed instead of bef uh, before that, so that there's no referral uh, to what could come and not uh, to come from that uh, one of the ministers. So, so that's the point I thought I should deal with right uh, in the beginning so that when we work on recommendations and observations, we can take that uh, into account. And I'm sure we, having read the same uh, documents, I think with this thing of draft and final draft, uh, there may have been some issues there in terms of information uh, missing. I have uh, on my side, in particular with DCTT noticed uh, the missing SABO, uh, 
important recommendations, uh, and I've raised that with uh, the content advisors and and and, and COVID support, and I'm sure they'll be able to respond to those, <laughs> which therefore means that would uh, indeed appreciate that they have worked uh, in the short space of time to consolidate what we ourselves termed the long uh, presentation for the day and engagements. Uh, and that we use today's meeting to also put further amendments where we need to and post uh, the meeting once the cleaning up has been done. We have it again uh, circulated for members to see if all those would have been affected and if there are any further submissions uh, that in writing will still be uh, acceptable and will still be able to see in any way the final report that goes to the House uh, on behalf of the committee that it covers those points. So I just thought I should uh, also clarify uh, that point, uh, assuming that members having read the reports would agree with me that there were these missing uh, uh, areas, uh, of course, uh, and further uh, points to, uh, to talk to. Uh, and maybe the last point will just be on the uh, consistency in the writing, especially when you refer to audit opinions. I know generally we would use the language of clean audit and, and so on. But the point would be that a clean audit is understood to be an unqualified report and it has no matters uh, uh, or material findings uh, on it. Uh, but uh, once uh, it's qualified, it's unqualified with the material findings. You have to be consistent in every entity uh, that is unqualified, but that is met, there are matters raised uh, so that we don't just say unqualified audit opinion. It may leave the impression that it's all clean audits uh, when it's not, it's not the case. Uh, so, so, so that will be also something uh, one thought from just quality assurance side of things uh, may still need to be looked at. Uh, otherwise, I, I, I do trust that members uh, have gone through the reports and they will be making the necessary amendments uh, to the reports. Uh, Hajira will assist us with uh, the flighting of the reports. So this will be on GCIS and MDDA. We'll do it as we usually do, go page by page, but spend time on what we say are observations of the committee, as well as the recommendations of the committee. We are now on the committee observations.
on 13 there on observations under the department. I yeah, maybe not to generalize, generalize the it's community radio stations. That community radio stations become self-sustainable. But also that it is the task uh, of the MDDA um, as they talk to uh, the sustainability uh, model that they're working on. So it should be at the end today, but they should read community radio stations. And work on recommendations. Okay. Them today recommend on our recommendations. Okay, you can move down. Very important, on number eight, very important. Can I then check if there are any other additions? If not, can we get a, a formal mover and seconder on the adoption of the GCIS and the MTD? Honorable I move the adoption of the report. Thank you. I second, uh, Honorable Chair. The Honorable Dr. Pasop seconds. We know to two. The AFF notes the report. Any objection us of adopting the report? No objection. Uh, the report is agreed to. Then get to the next report. On TCDT and its entities. When I want the observations, starting with the, the department. Yeah. 
If I don't see your hand, uh, honorable members, you will then just indicate uh, by calling your name so that uh, I note you. All right. Um, can we get, no, let's get back there on the department. Now there's something there about BDM. Right. Honorable members, you'll correct, you'll correct me because I've said this correction in the way I understood it uh, as chairing the meeting, that uh, it's not all entities. Uh, that the Broadcasting Digital Migration BDM policy has a detrimental effect on entities implementing the program and those directly affected like the SABC. So it's not That's like correct, Chairperson. I think we listed the SAPC. We also yeah. listed Centec. Centec, USASA, USASA. I remember the other remember the, one. Yes, USAF, uh, USASA. Um, remember that was when we're having even the figures are not the same that we we need to focus on those. Uh, this includes calling them in. So at least there's agreement on that. So I just wanted that change to be done. Uh, I, I did submit it. Okay, we can go down. So. You can change that today. Chair. Yes, Honorable Kubega. Yes, thank you very much, Chair. Can I just check with Chair to say on the side of the SAPO, because also it's working with the issue of the STPs, is not being included on the on that uh, uh, entities that the, they are working with the issue of BDM. Yes, honorable uh, colleague, it's all those that work on the BDM. So that includes sub. Yes. Point of clarity, chair. Yes, honorable uh, Portland. If my memory serves me well, there was no real implications on the audit outcome of SAPO in relation to BDM. But Centec and the SAPC, they raised those as issues. So I'm a bit uncomfortable including SAPO in that list because it is not the list of those that are, that, that are affected by BDM, but it is affected in terms of the audit report. Thanks, Chair. Yes, um, Honorable uh, uh, Podlani, as it relates to the audit side, uh, like we agree with you, let's 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 talk differently from the part about the program where we call them to appear uh, before the committee, because the set of boxes are with the sub. There have been also issues raised, uh, even about the reconciliation of those numbers. What is in the stores? What is the uh, out there and, and there have been investigations before. Uh, so I'm saying maybe let's separate from the recommendation itself where we are asking those that are implementing and there have been issues raised uh, with them. I'm not sure if no that Jefferson. would help. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. You have you, you have also covered me on, on, on my side because at the end of the day, we are saying all the entities that are working with the issue of the BGM. So SAPO is part there because it was dealing with the issue of the STP boxes. Thank you. Okay, we, we then move at least this agreement there. We're now on Centec.
can move. Now on SABC. Yeah, move. Can move. Just up quickly, sorry. Something uh, there. As I said, just consistency on audit uh, uh, outcomes. We just have to consult back again the, the annual report to capture it as such. If it's a disclaimer, it's a disclaimer. Uh, if it's a, if it's a, an unqualified report with uh, findings, at least indicate that. Uh, so you'll find it common in a number of them. So in that report, uh, if we can get that done, I can come back to it so we can move. Sorry, Chair. Uh, Honorable Kubeka. As you are raising, can maybe uh, included on the issue of FPB? because it's not being also noted to say it managed to receive uh, that uh, a clean audit chair. And you take into account all of your different types of- I, I, don't, I don't hear who's, who's on the platform now. Or is it someone who's opened up the mic? But there was a background, uh, someone, yes. Okay. We can then move. What frequencies are these broken? They, 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 I think. Get to recommendations. There we are. Um, can we, as I said, uh, honorable members, uh, I did go back on the issue of uh, SAPO. Can we also see the observations and recommendations uh, on SAPO? I would want you to spend time on this one, honorable members, because as I said, my own reading was uh, when it was absent um, and I checked the content advisors uh, and the team there uh, that a similar confusion that may have been in the portfolio committee itself uh, would have led to that in that uh, it is post bank that did not table, uh, but supported and also responded to questions. So we are on observations. So I will take a bit of time on this one to allow members to.
chairperson? Yes, the Honorable uh, Oshani. I'm not sure if we captured the issue that was raised by the CEO about there not being ex the, the executive board. I'm not sure if, sorry, I'm, 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 my, my, my gadgets are down and I have no shade, so I'm reading for, from a very small screen. So my guidance, your guidance, please. The issue about there being no executive where you have people acting, have we captured it correctly? Is it the way I'm understanding it on point 10? Uh, that uh, concern that okay. software is a management problem and, and that no. except for the CEO position, everyone is still acting in a contract position. Oh, okay, then my, my, my request chairperson is that we, uh, we amplify that and list those that are acting and then I'm happy with that. Okay, I'm, I'm sure the content advises us to get the point there, uh, CEO, HR, the CFO and that which would uh, then speak to the recommendation uh, that even the Auditor General put where it talks about filling of vacancies there, which X1 also emphasizes. Okay, I take it that point then is uh, sure. Is there another member? I think where it says, uh... Yes, yes, Chair, thanks. I think, Chair, where it says is concerned that vital vacancies are not filled, we ought to say which I'm vital. Uh, yeah, so so yeah. basically name them. Uh, express, we must be expressive about, yes. Yeah. And then... Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I think that's fine, Chief. Okay. Yes, we would, uh, would 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 list them there. Like like I said, we should be able to do that. The, the CEO uh, put them quite clearly. Chair, uh, it's died. My hand is up. Okay, um, is that Honorable Kolabanar? Thank you. Um, in 14, um, that SAPO fired five employees. Is, I see it, it does say needs clarity. Is, is there no further information? Do we know who it was, why it was, why they were fired? Did they steal? Were they charged? We don't really, that doesn't give us much. I don't know if there was anything more that was available, but I think we need to find out. Yeah, it does that, uh, Honorable Kolabanat, I understood that point uh, differently as the one of the five people withdrawn from, um, what is it? Is it the trustees uh, thing on the medical well, aids? Yeah, that, that was only done um, literally two weeks ago. I don't think that would be covered in this yes. report. So that's what I'm saying, that what I remember would be that one. Y uh, yes, I think that that will only be referred to, I'm sure, in the next annual report because the cutoff is long past for, for, for the annual report. I mean, it, it, it did not happen during that period. So this yes, only happened so two weeks that. ago that yeah. she, she kicked them out. So, so what five employees are we talking about here and under what circumstances and what for? Uh, so I think we definitely need clarity on this lot. Okay. Should, should we remove like, it, Ms. Barnum? Can I just ask yeah, you? Like, you like, like I said, uh, from where I'm sitting, there's not been that issue except as it talked to trustees, that was in a question and response uh, yes. uh, side of things. So would have to take it out and, and then uh, move on. Yes, I don't think that can be referred to because it doesn't fall under the... The yes. time frame. of that. Then we're on recommendations. A another issue, Chair, if I may. Are you on recommendations? Um, I I I'm not sure if I missed it oh, somewhere. Is there some reference somewhere to the court cases going on at, at the South African Post Office? Um, because there, there is a huge court case against them for taking the contribution, the medical aid contributions. Um, that has been ongoing for some time. 
So I'm not sure if there are any other court cases, um, but but that was that certainly has been ongoing during this time period. Um, so so uh, they were forced to to pay over huge amounts of money now to pay. Um, not only in relation to that court case, but but because they've been found to be um, keeping the medical aid and other contributions within the post office and not paying them over to to the end entities such as Medipos or UIF or whoever. Um, so I think that court case was ongoing during this time frame. Thank you. Okay, we'll find a phrasing to to that. Yeah, I would probably yeah. say which resulted in the in, in the um, payment of contributions um, for only union members, I suppose. I don't know. Is it a union? I think. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying let's. let's yes, order. maybe look order. into that. I, I'm not sure of the name or anything. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Now we'll, yeah. we'll work on the phrasing. No, no, so that we don't refer to something we cannot uh, stand for. So we can look at, at that uh, so that the facts are correct. Honorable Quebec. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Oh, thank you for, for, for saying that statement. I just wanted to check because when I recall last week in the portfolio committee, the CEO on the side of the medical AIDS uh, 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 story was trying to explain, even with the funds, uh, maybe on that side, can we also maybe to be to, to verify it because indeed she was trying to explain to say they are trying their level best on that side of trying to correct the situation as they, it was a challenge with the issue of, of funds there. Thank you. If I may chair, I've been following this very closely. May I speak? Yes, Honourable Kolopanakou. Thank you. Um, I think we've got we've got two separate issues. Uh, yes, of course, no medical aid contributions have gone to the medical aid. So some union members went to court, and they the, uh, the SOPO was forced to pay their contributions. The rest of the members simply had their medical aid cut off. So the sheriff of the court went and attached uh, sixty six million rand which the post office was, was not sending the letter through to have released. That has now finally, I think three days ago, been released and the medical aids have been um, reinstated, although there are still huge debts that the post office, have they've taken the contributions from the employees but not paid it to the medical aid. So it is it is their issue um, and, and as much as she tried to blame other people. It has happened on her watch that the medical aid contributions have been taken by the post office and not paid to the medical aid. So this is an ongoing huge concern. I mean, it's it's being investigated by the Hawks is a massive concern because no entity may take contributions by employees and use them for something else instead of paying it to the medical aid or PAYE, UIF, pension, et cetera. Um, and I'm afraid that's what's been happening. Thank you. Uh, Honorable Quebec, I'm not sure if you want to still come back uh, on the matter or should I just uh, uh, explain it, uh, exactly the point we're making? Uh, Chair, I, I think you can come in, but as I was saying, uh, the CEO have tried to, 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 to clarify it, uh, uh, that matter last week to oh, oh, uh, Honorable Kola Barnard, but you can come in. Okay. No, I was saying, honorable members, we would uh, work on uh, the wedding, but our wedding is going to be informed by facts because there were some facts shared with us, including the part about the money that would have gone to lawyers, stayed in that account, so it was paid over, but the understanding on the other side would have been that that has not been done. So those were were we explained, including what the situation is uh, currently, and we're given uh, some evidence of uh, uh, monies that got transferred by a particular time and so on, and where things are. 
Uh, but there's also correction. What correction, honourable? Uh, the money, the money was was attached by the sheriff of the court, so I, I don't know why it's saying lawyers um, and put into a specific account held by the sheriff of the court, and that was awaiting a letter from the South African Post Office um, to allow its release. So th yeah. that seems to no, be the situation. No, I don't think I'm it went to lawyers at a, all. That's why I'm saying we. We would work on the wedding based on facts shared, but I'll just clarifying as Honorable Kubega would have also raised the point. <clears throat> so, but the part about deaths of uh, SAPO has been admission from all angles uh, that they still have historical uh, debt that they need to uh, deal with. Hence, they talk to funding that is required, which helps both in addressing the debt, but also assisting them to uh, implement the, the turnaround strategy, uh, which is the post office of tomorrow uh, in that regard. So we'd, we'd work on this for as long as a principle that we separate those and we are able to put uh, uh, facts uh, so that content advisors can can work on, on this with the community support and circulate it accordingly. Uh, but I also want us to still look at the recommendations uh, whilst we agree that these other points would work then. Uh, on recommendations. Chair, perhaps we could add one to that. Oh, no, there's yes, a couple of call up on it. Uh, we, yes, um, I, no, I, I'm very happy. Actually, it says it in number six. I think I, I'm adequately covered there. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other member? Okay, so that takes care of. Uh, the SAPO uh, uh, portion, uh, of course, uh, because the reports are in the main based on the annual report uh, that uh, paragraph on SAPO would also be included, right? Uh, then that, that's, that's the report. Uh, so if we can also, uh, from a point of uh, uh, formalizing uh, adoption of the report, if I can have an indication of the mover and seconder, taking into account uh, uh, the areas that we said would work. Thank you, Chair. With those amendments made, I move that the report be adopted. Honorable Kumbu. Chairperson. Yes, Honorable uh, Majose. No, thank you, Chair. Um, 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 with, uh, can I ask a question? Because I want to get clarity on the report. Yes. Because I wouldn't feel comfortable in adopting um, a, a reports with amendments that were not discussed within a committee. So I will only going to get the info that were discussed in the committee, or now we are going to get more information on items that were discussed and we those are not the responses that we got in terms of especially on the item of uh sapo and uh, the medical aid and so forth because if um if we're adopting a report it's a report that we had uh, discussed in a meeting with uh, with all of us and the ceo was giving a response so i would then say if maybe we omitted a response from the CEO side, then yes, I, I don't mind in adopting the report. But if now we're including new information, then that is where my problem is going to be because then how are we including information that we not discussed in the meeting? Can I get clarity on that, Chair? Uh, 
as you know, all the corrections we're making are on the basis of what was presented. We, we can't create something new now. So that's what it means. So when Honorable Kum pushes for adoption, it is on the basis of that. That we're not changing, but we are just reworking based on facts shared with us. Thank you. Okay, then Chair, I will move, I will second the adoption of the report. Report uh, would have been seconded. May I then check if there's any objection on us um, adopting the report with the amendments that we are effecting. And that amendment includes putting back the portion on SAPO as presented to us. No objection. So the report is agreed to. May we go back to the agenda? Uh, Chairperson, it will be three sets of minutes now, Chair. We are now on the, is it the minutes of the 20th? September. That's correct, Chair. Okay. We'll go through page by page as we shall do corrections. If there are no corrections, can I then get a mover and second for adoption of minutes of the 20th? Okay, Chair. Honorable Chair. Honorable Ntembo, I recognize. I move adoption of the minutes. Thank you. Over. Uh, that person just got clarity was the screen shared because I could not see anything. I don't get you, Honorable Bolani. I don't know whether it's because my gadget is low on battery, but was the screen shared? Did the other members see it? Because I could yes. not see it from my side. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, the screen has been shared. Uh, we really feel for you. We are finding it difficult to, to follow that in that score. That person it makes the point for the need for physical meetings. Uh, I, I understand you, Honorable Bolan, uh, and, and uh, I, I really feel for you uh, that we need to consider that, but also that why communications uh, uh, and digital uh, committee, we should make uh, this work uh, not only for us, but for society generally. But I, I take your point. The minutes of the 27th, uh, September 2022. Chairperson, if you can just get a second chair on the 20th of September. Oh, sorry. Uh, Honorable Mtembu, uh, Honorable Borlan, it was like seconding. So Honorable Mtembu had uh, moved uh, on the one of the 20th. Can I get formally the seconder? I second, Chair. Okay, thank you. We're well, now on the 27th, September.
there are no corrections. Can I also get a second, uh, a, a mover and a seconder for the adoption of minutes? Am I still audible? You can hear you, Chairperson. Oh, I thought it's me who's outside the meeting. I've asked for a mover and a seconder. That's important for formal adoption of minutes. Yes, you are audible. Um, I, I propose an, um, a move for adoption of the minutes. Thank you. Honorable Mutembo moves. Can I get a seconder? I said, Chair. Honorable Kumu seconds. Minutes are great two. We're now dealing with the last. The last set of minutes. Okay. That's uh, the meeting of the 11th of October. Uh, as you know, it's the minutes, but we have also dealt with the actual reports. Can I then get the mover and seconder for adoption of these minutes? The minutes of the 11th of October, last week minutes. Chairperson, I move for the adoption of the minutes. Honorable Kubeka moves for adoption of minutes. Can I get a seconder? Honorable Dr. Basso. I second the adoption of the minutes. Thank you, the minutes are seconded. Take it that there's no objection. So no objection. Uh, so all the sets of minutes have been agreed to. Um, Hajira, you would uh, indicate if there's um, another item to deal with. Uh, that's it for the agenda, Chairperson. Unless you have something else, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, honorable members. Uh, of course, uh, as this takes us to uh, the end of the business uh, of the day, uh, it's really a reminder that if, if the info is not uh, reached you uh, by now, that please do make comments uh, later today when you go through it on those proposals on amending the program to include the areas we identified last week uh, to be put in the program. We can just uh, get your response in writing if you are so agreed. Uh, like I said, in particular with SAPO, we would want to take it just after the Minister of uh, Finance would have uh, delivered the medium term budget policy uh, statement to the House. So if you can just keep that in mind, that would have uh, such. Uh, of course, as I commented earlier, if there's any improvement on uh, the part that relates to the CBC, we should be flexible to be convened to a meeting outside of uh, our usual slots. Uh, I'm repeating this point because I do appreciate that you also serve in the other committees that may clash with uh, a day we may look at. Uh, and I'm pleading with you uh, for that flexibility for us to complete our task. With that, uh, honorable uh, members, uh, we take the opportunity to thank you for your contributions as we end the meeting. So the meeting stays adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair.